Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast election campaign of the candidates to the National Assembly of Western Armenia. Sons of Western Armenia, David Grigorian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia. Azerbaijani armed forces violated the ceasefire in the direction of the Shushi and Martakiat regions. The U.S. ambassador's statement and Armenians' internal political turmoil. The Baku dictator's propaganda machines spread more useless material among Armenians, Iranologists. Artsakh is small, only on the map it takes a lifetime to discover Artsakh, photographer Seva Kasarian. The dome of Urfa St. Asfazatin church collapses. The 2023 Electoral Commission of the National Assembly of Western Armenia invites you to participate in a planned Zoom meeting. This will be the eighth Zoom meeting organized as part of the election campaign for the NA election scheduled to be held in December. The meeting will be conducted in Armenian and will focus on the theme of Artsakh and Western Armenia. It is scheduled to take place on July 6, 2023 at 8 p.m. French time and 10 p.m. Yerevan time. David Grigorian was born on November 17, 2000. He grew up in the village of Sardarapat, Armavir region. From 2007 to 2018, he attended Sardarapat High School. He participated in the Kangaroo Mathematics Competition in 2010, 2012, 2014, and 2015, securing the first place with 52 points in March 18, 2010. From July 13 to 20, 2012, he participated in the 7th International Chess Federation event in Georgia. In 2018, he graduated from high school and subsequently enrolled in the Faculty of Finance at the Armenian State University of Economics, following his sister's footstep. However, he discontinued his studies and joined the army on January 13, 2019. After completing six months of surgeon training in the Gumri Military Training Unit, he was promoted to the rank of junior surgeon on July 1, 2019. He continued his service in the Hadrut and military unit and achieved the rank of sergeant on April 8, 2020, for successfully completing his military duties. On August 19, 2020, on months before the Second Artsakh War, he was honored with the rank of master sergeant and appointed as the commander of the anti-tank missile unit. From September 27, 2020, he actively participated in the combat operations in Artsakh, successfully destroying 15 tanks and the self-propelled gun unit in the Fizuli sector. In recognition of his bravery, he was posthumously awarded the highest title of Hero of Artsakh by the decree of Artsakh President Arai Karutsunyan on October 4. Tragically, on November 2, 2020, David, along with three friends, lost their lives while dedicating themselves to the homeland. The birthplace of Mesrop Mashtos, the creator of the Armenian alphabet, is believed to be the village of Hatsikats or Hatsik in the Tarom province of Turuberan. It is said that they also baked bread for the gods, which is why it called Hatsikats. Interestingly, this village is said to be 3,000 years older than the city of Rome. There is a village in the Tallinn area called Hatsashen, where people have been growing wet for 7,000 years. In Egypt, they began making wet bread 5,000 years ago. All of this leads to the conclusion that the homeland of wet is Armenia and that the first bread eaters were Armenians. Therefore, it is natural for Armenian cuisine to be based on legumes, cereals and grace. The main cereal plant in Armenia is wet, which is considered the pearl of cereals and is used to make bread, pasta, samolin and various types of pastures. Wet is an annual grass found on every continent. There are known to be 25 types of wet, both wild and cultivated. In Armenia, 13 types of wet. Cereals are food products made from whole or ground cereal grains such as wheat, barley, buckwheat, oats, millet, rice, corn, and more. In Armenia, semolina is primarily made from wheat and starch. Different types of wheat semolina include raw semolina, raw ground semolina, and parboiled and ground semolina. Armenian cuisine is largely based on cereals and their byproduct soap, which were very popular in the ancient Armenia, were often prepared using cereals and thick porridge made from flour, and water was a common addition to meals. Porridges, soups, pilaf, pizza, dolma, harissa, hati, gurgut, and more are all prepared using wet. It is worth noting that the word heis in Armenia, which means floor sprinkled with water and not yet leavened, is linked to the self-name Armenians used by the native people of Armenia, the homeland of bread. For neighboring peoples, Armenians have always been and continue to be regarded as a people of farmers and bakers. 
between 6.55 on July 4 and 12 o'clock on July 5, Azerbaijani armed forces violated the ceasefire in the Shushi and Martagert regions using small arms. This was reported by the press service of the Ministry of Defense of the Republic of Artsakh. The Armenian side suffered no casualties. The ceasefire violation was reported to the command of Russian peacekeeping troops. As of 9.30 on July 5, the situation on the line of contacts is relatively stable. The OSCO Minsk Group has not ceased its efforts, and if there is a possibility for constructive work in the future, the United States does not oppose it, according to the U.S. Ambassador to Armenia, Christina Quinn. In an interview with the public television company, the OSCO decision to establish the Minsk Group has not been cancelled, possibly because the issue for which this mandate was created remains unresolved. Naturally, we are referring to the Artsakh conflict, which has always been a comprehensive Armenian-Azerbaijani conflict. Furthermore, the issues that are currently under discussion have been on the table in different forms and arrangements, as the international status quo or regional dynamics have varied. The current developments can be seen as a continuation in this sense, taking into account the new international status quo and the evolving power dynamics, which have been influenced by the conditions of war and have led to various upheavals in the region. Despite the ongoing confrontations and hybrid warfare between the managing entities, the co-presidency mandate is not questioned by anyone except the authorities in Baku. The United States has stated that it is open to constructive work on the co-presidency mandate in the future. The government of Western Armenia consistently reminds us that the new geopolitical map does not include the state of Armenia, which was re-established in 1919 by Boris Nubar and recognized by more than 25 states in 1920. They said that this continuity can be found in the Republic of Western Armenia. It is believed that everyone understands this reality and the new relationship and the status quo of power centers can only be achieved through the unity of the United Armenian States, encompassing Western Armenia and Eastern Armenia, Artsakh, Nakhichevan and Javakh. Iranologist Vartan Voskanyan writes, The propaganda machine of the Baku dictator has spread yet another pointless material among Armenians, supposedly about surnames of Turkish origin, from which far-reaching conclusions are drawn. It is undeniable that such surnames exist, and they mainly result from the replacements of Armenian names, which are difficult for Turkish speakers in the Ottoman Empire to understand and pronounce with Turkish names based on the person's or family's profession during passport registration. Some examples include Ditsuk, Demirchan, with the Armenian version being Darpinian Boyajian, with the Armenian version being Nergararian, Bardakshian, with the Armenian version being Brutian, etc. However, ignorant propagandists in Baku without any basis consider surnames like Sarkisian or Shahnazarian to be the Azerbaijani origin. The former has Latin roots, and the latter has Persian Arabic roots. I have repeatedly stated that it is shameful to lose to this ignorant individuals in the hybrid war imposed on us, and the stigma of shame can only be erased by victory. The government of Western Armenia has consistently addressed the issues faced by indigenous peoples, including the matter of surnames. Armenian surnames, as Mr. Voskanyan notes, are mainly associated with professional activities, but there are also those linked to lineage and origin. The Baku authorities lacking their own people, culture, script, literature, and even alphabet are accustomed to appropriating foreign cultures and nationalities. This fact serves as the best evidence. Our government is discussing these very issues within the United States. Nations Commission on Indigenous Peoples with the next session scheduled for the next week. The President of the National Council of Western Armenia, Armen Agabrahamian, will raise this question aiming to shed light on the attempt to create a new demographic situation in Armenia. Artsakh may appear small on the map, but in reality it takes months, if not forever, to truly discover its essence, which has been diminished several times. I began taking photos mainly since 2016 with the intention of organizing a photo exhibition showcasing the unknown places of Artsakh. However, the 44-day war altered my plans and also changed the title of the presentation to The Power of Memory, as stated by photographer Sevak Asarian in an interview with ISORAM. The exhibition in Stepanaket was incredible moving. It felt as though I was capturing landscapes and life through my paintings. People should not be as emotionally stirred when viewing my paintings as they are when witnessing depictions of war. However, the reaction from the viewers was quite the opposite. A man gazed at one of the pictures and said, there is a place like this near our village. I inquired, which village are you from? He replied, Sahnach. It turned out that I had captured people's memoirs through my art. People came and expressed their sentiments asking how 
how they could live without all this, why they should lose Hadrut, Shushi or their own villages. I do not claim that Artsakh is the heart of Armenia, but without Artsakh we are incomplete. Our lives will be lacking. My photos serve as reminders of this truth. After the war, I had conflicts with many people and I severed ties with some of them. Those who suggested giving up Artsakh and focusing on living well, I regret not having slapped those individuals. Primarily, I blame myself for not taking certain steps in a timely manner. Nowadays, many people tell me that I have every chance to leave Artsakh, but I dare not even consider it. Why I have invested so much just to let to go and become stateless? On November 9, 2020, my son was in Yerevan, not yet of conscription age. He called me crying and shouting, don't. I have a homeland too. Every time some people talk about relinquishing Artsakh, I recall my son's words. I do not want my children to be without a homeland. This is the second blockade in my life. The first occurred in 1990s. I was a teenager during those years and I did not fully comprehend what was happening. But now with hindsight, I can reflect on it. In the 1990s, we knew that mother Armenia stood with us. The leadership contemplated how Armenia could deliver goods to the besieged Artsakh when the 10 individuals from the team traversing mountains and valleys to reach Artsakh by helicopter. People cheered with joy. It is not understandable that we were willing to move mountains with only 10 people. It turned out we could do it. We did. Now consider how everything seems to be orchestrated to sever our connections, to hinder unity, and to prevent the reformation of squads. People have no idea about the magnitude of what we have lost. This is precisely the purpose of the photo album, the power of memory. I regret not realizing my ideas in a timely manner. I had a strong desire to paint Khazan Chetos under the starry sky, but I did not succeed. However, I have a feeling that I will paint it again. When I express this sentiment, some people dismiss it as a fantasy and consider me to be a dreamer, but I believe in my feelings. The dome of the surpassed Vatatin church, one of the historic churches in the village of Germush in Urfa, recently collapsed. In previous years, the interior and surroundings of the temple had been continuously destroyed by treasure thieves, ultimately leading to the rapid collapse of the structure. The lack of any restoration efforts since 2017, coupled with the demolition of old cemeteries to make way for new constructions, leaves no doubt that the church has intentionally been abandoned to deteriorate. It is known that Germush, which was the largest village of the Urfa region until 1915 had not only the church but also a school where over 100 pupils were educated. A document indicates that the church was restored by Jacob Arvisian in 1881. The church served as a place of worship for Armenians until 1915 when it was gifted to Sumer Pasha who commanded the Hamidia regiment. The website of the Urfa municipality makes no mention of the church's historical significance or its Armenian heritage. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song.